Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. Today, we're going to look at what I like to call some sovereign citizen shorts. So these are postings pulled off of social media made by sovereign citizens, Moorish sovereign citizens, or people who are leaning towards becoming sovereign citizens. So we're going to we're going to laugh a little bit. We're going to learn a little bit. And uh, we're definitely going to have some fun. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show. Trying to get to 10,000 subscriptions, go ahead, give me a subscribe. Most of my watchers are not subscribed. If everybody who watched my channel subscribed, I'd already have that 10,000. Also, sign up for my email list. You sign up for my email list, you get a free PDF on the history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement. Now, before we dig into this, raise your cup, your glass in the air. I'm going back to my old faithful. I had been drinking coffee for every episode. Today, we're doing Diet Coke. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Also, leave me a comment on the sound. So this was posted, this, this first one here uh, was posted on social media. It says, I'm looking for a form that says I do not have to provide my SS for employment. I, <clears throat> I, attempting to establish my rights that I do not consent for the stealing of my earnings weekly. Any help with this form is greatly appreciated. There's 108 comments on that. This was posted on Facebook and 19 likes. I'm sure it's in one of those sovereign citizen groups. Listen, dude, don't do it. You're going to end up in jail. And uh, here we have another one. Look at this. Hey, guys, so I got a notice of not filing an income tax return for 2018 in my city. I sent them a notice and a declaration that stated if they asked me to appear in court, that they agree to pay $500 per occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bud. Okay, go ahead. Send that bill. See how far that gets you. It, it gets it gets worse. Well, they're going to call me to court next month. Should I just apply a commercial lien on the tax administrator when I send them a bill and they don't pay? Sure. Go ahead. File the commercial lien. You'll end up in jail. I've talked to her personally and asked who would come forward and claim I've damaged them if I don't file a return. I asked, who is the city of Napoleon? She said she'll do it, and I said, your name isn't City of Napoleon. Oh, you got her there. So you would be committing perjury. She said she didn't care. Good. The judge here does not like me <laughs> and has denied me due process of law multiple times. Any help would be great. He probably didn't deny you due process. He probably denied your sovereign citizen nonsense. Listen. People and human beings can represent entities, okay? Yes, corporations are fictional entities. Uh, so are uh, governments in a way. That's correct. We're going to get deeper into that. So is any association, any group, any company, um, any club, right? But these things have legal meaning under the law. The city of Napoleon doesn't have to be a person, okay, for them to have a human being represent them in court. This was interesting. Jane Hume at Senator Hume. I guess uh, she's Senator Hume. Or I guess she's a senator. I, I don't know. I don't know all the senators. She says, getting some interesting fan mail at the moment. This was the 20th of April. She is a senator. Okay. Uh, 20th of April, 2020. I don't know if she's a United States senator or state senator, you know, like a uh, state legislature. Regardless, the letter says, dear Senator Hume, are you or have you ever been a Freemason? Do not try to skirt this question. Oh, you got her. I require a written reply from yourself within 14 days. Or what are you going to do, sir? Are you going to file a lien that's going to get you put in jail? Deemed in law to have been received and read by yourself. Well, guess what? You know, just saying it doesn't make it true. That's a sovereign citizen. That sounds like a sovereign citizen line there, doesn't it? Whoops. Okay, let me pull this one away. Oh, and here's the good one, right? We always got to finish with the good stuff. Okay, so this was from Facebook and an insane, an insane associate of mine. What rational person thinks this is viable? And there we have the United States flag and some of those Moorish flags, which that middle one almost looks like a, like the, like a devil. That's a pentagram. 
uh, that's a little scary. Maybe, okay, it's a star, but it's close to a pentagram. So it's, this says, the reason why Moors slash Africans cannot, and let's remember, all Africans are not Moors, and all Moors are not necessarily Africans. If you look at the actual definition of Moors, you would see that. It says, the reason why Moors slash Africans cannot be U.S. citizens, because the Moroccan Empire has a business arrangement with the British Empire, European corporate contract citizens, Caucasian men. The United States is a foreign European corporation conducting trade and commerce in foreign lands. See in Ray Marion's estate affirmed in U.S. Perkins 163 U.S. 625. So I found the case of U.S. v. Perkins. Let's see if it says what this these this this claims here is that is that Moors cannot be U.S. citizens because the Moroccan Empire is a business arrangement with the British Empire, and the United States is a foreign corporation conducting trade and commerce in foreign lands. Okay, I just read it all over again. Here's the little case stub uh, from the United States v. Perkins. So, oh, 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 look at that. May 25th, 1896, 124 years ago. This is the law they rely on, okay? Uh, and Kate, I, I'm sure most of you know, almost all laws have changed since 1896. All right, so in I read the case, all right, and I only pulled stubs here. It says, whether under these statutes the United States are a corporation exempted by law from taxation. That is in the case. See, sovereigns will take a take. See, this is the issue in the case. This is a question that the court is answering. Sovereigns will take this and say, oh, United States are a corporation. And just circle, United States are a corporation. And then conclude, the United States must be a corporation. That's not logically, you need to take a logic class. Dear sovereign citizens, take a logic course. They offer them at any college. All right, so here's the question better defined. Whether the United States are a corporation exempt by law from taxation within the meaning of the New York statutes is the remaining question in the case. The Court of Appeals has held this exemption was applicable only to, I think, domestic corporations, et cetera, et cetera. The important thing to know here is in this sentence here is within the meaning of the New York statutes. So each state can define corporations however they want, okay? So all 50 states could define a corporation as something different. That doesn't make the United States a corporation, okay? It may mean that the United States, the federal government, is considered a corporation in New York for the narrow purpose of determining what is exempt by law from taxation, okay? That's a very, very narrow legal meaning, and it only is, is applicable when you're getting really into the weeds on the exact facts of the case. Nothing in that statement can lead you to think the United States is a foreign European corporation conducting trade and commerce in foreign lands. Well, yeah, the United States does conduct trade and commerce in foreign lands. We probably conduct trade and commerce with every country in the world. Okay, so here's the relevant portion here. Okay, let me let me shrink this down a little bit from the case itself. In addition to this, however, the United States are none of the class of corporations intended by law to be exempt from taxation. Remember, this is just in New York. What the court and from 1896. <laughs> What the corporations are to which the exemption was intended to apply are indicated by the tax laws of New York and are confined to those of a religious, educational, charitable, or reformatory purpose. We think it was not intended to apply to a purely political or governmental corporation like the United States, okay? And the sovereigns will take a sentence like that and they will run to left field, right field, out of the outfield, into the river, wherever they want to go, okay? They skew the logical reasoning of a court's opinion here. This goes to what I said before. The laws of New York, all right, back in 1896, didn't consider the federal government for taxation purposes to be a corporation. At issue in this case was whether an individual who died and left his estate to the federal government 
whether or not that was taxable, it, ta whether that money was taxable by the state of New York. So some guy died. He said, I'm leaving my money to the United States government and New York wanted to tax it. That's what this case was about. All right. That's it. It's a very narrow issue under very narrow factual circumstances. That's what you have to understand about most case laws. Most case law is going to be confined to, well, maybe not most, but a lot of case law is going to be confined to the specific facts of the case. If something under similar facts comes up, then this is a guide for you in order to interpret the law. It is not a guide for, for anybody to conclude that the United States is a foreign European corporation. Look, you're entitled to any loony opinion you want. People out there believe the earth is flat. But the United States law does not recognize this. A case from 1896, this case is likely um, no longer holds any authority in the state of New York. I can't say that for sure, but most likely it's so old. Um, and it just doesn't draw the conclusions that they draw here. This first sentence is totally made up. The reason why more Africans cannot be U.S. citizens because Moroccan Empire is a business arrangement with the British Empire. None of that's in the case, okay? That's totally made up. That's like your opinion, man, for those of you who have seen the big Lebowski. I mean, these guys are just off their rocker. I mean, you could take any book or any sentence. I could I could open up the Bible and start reading it and tell you what they're actually talking about is space aliens. Okay, y you know, don't be don't make things more complicated than they are. That's all. That's that's what these these humans do um, in order to serve their own purposes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. These are some of my favorite videos to make. I know everybody else likes the actual, you know, they want to see a police or a courtroom transaction. I get it. But I have a lot of fun with these ones. We'll do more of these and more of the other videos that you love uh, in the upcoming episodes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the Common Sense Academy. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Really looking to get subscriptions. Share this video. It's a great way. Put it in a Facebook group. Put it in, uh, send it in a Facebook message. Text it to your friends, anybody who would like it. It's a great free way to support this show. Please, please help me out. Um, this show will always remain free. Thank you very much for tuning in. Common Sense Academy.